think we've done. Yes, so uh, right, I'll just start with this. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu salamu ala Rasulillah, ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. It's a, a late start, and also there was a long gap since we have left at the last time. And uh, our class, inshallah, from now on, will start straight away after Maghrib. So Maghrib, I believe, in two weeks' time, will be around about seven. So start about ten past seven, bi'idhan illa. Okay. So start as early as the Maghrib prayers. Once the prayer of the Maghrib goes before seven, and then we will make it seven o'clock, inshallah, we'll start. Okay, right. So it is the blood money. That we're discussing and i know that this is something maybe it's not practical we don't use it these days but it's important to understand that basically that islam does not leave anything except that it would address it in order to make sure that the muslim he is in complete uh harmony with the with his life in the complete control of what you should do and we should not do so islam basically is for the whole aspect of your life. Adiyah, that's in Arabic. So we're going to go to the explanation of it, and we're going to go, when is the diyah required, and what is the diyah is in terms of money-wise? Is it being set or not? Father. The diyah is the money that is obligated due to an assault upon another. This money is to be given to the victim or to his relatives. It can occur when it, it can occur where there is a possibility of retaliation or when there is no such possibility. The dia is also called the apple. So, so basically, whether there is retaliation or there's no retaliation, uh, there, there will be some dia. But if the retaliation is complete, of course, there will be no dia. But if the retaliation is not complete, what does that mean? We're going to discuss it incomplete retaliation. I'll give you an example just to make you understand. So if, for example, a person had uh, deliberately cut off the hand of somebody from the arm, from here. Now, retaliation cannot be done incomplete. Why? Because we cannot guarantee if we're gonna retaliate in the exact cut, and we cannot guarantee the outcome of it. So let's say that this person cut off the other hand of the other person, this person survived. If I'm gonna retaliate and cut him from me, I might kill him. It might lead to the death of this person because there is no way that I could limit, first of all, where exactly the cut, number two, the outcome of it, it could be devastating. That's why there will be no full retaliation. But retaliation can be as follows. Either you take blood money for that, for your hand, or you retaliate for something that is can be uh, uh, fixed, which is you could retaliate by asking for his hand to be cut from the wrist, and then you take blood money from there to there. But I can't cut from here. So I had I cut it from here because this is what a joint. And from the joint, no problem. If he cut you from the uh, elbow, you have no problem. You cut him from the elbow. So you ask for retaliation to his elbow to be cut. But if the cut was from the half of the ha hand, there is no, as I said, way of limiting exactly or spotting exactly where it's going to be the retaliation. So the retaliation will be from the wrist and then whatever is left, it will be, have to be judged by the judge how much is going to be the uh, blood money. How can it be judged as well? Islam looks for that and, and makes sure that you will have the justified uh, retaliation and blood money. So let's just say how the judge would judge how much is the money from there to there. So he cut from here. He didn't want to take the whole of the hand. Okay. If he wants to take the whole of the hand up to here to the elbow, then he will say, let's say that this person whom his hand is being cut off a full slave. Slave. How much is he in the market? So he's in the market is worth, let's say, a hundred dinars. I think we're talking golden dinars. Let's say it costs about 5,000 pounds. And with his hand cut off, how much would it cost? 
would be less, of course. So let's say it's about 4,000 pounds. So what is the ratio between 4,000 and 5,000? So what is the ratio between 4,000? That's four fifth. So it's one. So he had lost one fifth, isn't it? One fifth. Okay. One fifth, which is uh, 20%. 20%. So that then it will be 20% of the blood money. How much is the blood money? It's been set, by the way. It's going to be, we're going to see it. It's 100 camels. And even each camel set what age it is. SubhanAllah, Islam, how is It's great. This is the deen of yours. The exact number. So so the, the, the judge will give you 20% of the full what? Blood money. But if, it's, if you have taken retaliation from the rest, and the rest is in money, it will be, of course, less money. Again, how much is he going to be if he lost that bit from a person who is a full slave to be sold and a slave which is that part is missing? How much the ratio and that will be taken from the blood money? This blood money called in Arabic al aql. The aql is not the brain here, the aql is from the aql al which is when we tie the camel, meaning that when the blood money takes place, the person who had done the crime will bring the blood money to the family of those whom the crime done against. And he will bring these camels and put them in his courtyard and he will tie them up. This is your blood money. From that came the word what? Al-Aql. So aql naqa So the criminal, the person who had done the offense, he will be bringing his blood money, which is the camels, tying it up in front of the house of the family or the person, if he's alive, whom the crime was being done against him. So he will make akl. Akl means to tie up. That's the word akl. Now, the basis for this practice is the Quranic verse so to do, does he talk about the aql in English? Yeah. Can you read, read the aql, please? The diya is also called aql. The source for that is that a murderer used to pay the blood money in camels. Did you, did you read that before? I haven't. So can you say what did you read? I just saw you. No, no, no. You read it. Explanation right. different. The diya is so also listen, the principle. You read everything in the book. The diya is also called aql. The source for that is that a murderer used to pay the blood money in camels, and he would tie them, and he would tie them, aqala, uh, uh, and he would tie them, uh, and he would tie them, uh, up at the courtyard of the relatives of the deceased, or he would tie them down with his cord, iqal, in order to hand them over. No, iqal, the iqal, iqal. iqal in order to hand them over to the relatives of the deceased. One would say, uh, from so-and-so, if he paid off his blood money. The basis for this practice is the Quranic verse, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ أَنْ يَقْتُلَ مُؤْمِنًا إِلَّا خَطَأً وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا In the front of the translation, مَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ أَنْ يَقْتُلَ مُؤْمِنًا إِلَّا خَطَأً I'll say. It is not for a believer to kill to, uh, it is not for a believer to kill a believer except that it be by mistake. So it's the mistake. So it's a mistake. You cannot kill a believer. Well, it's a mistake. I was driving and suddenly you jumped in front of the car and I crashed and you killed you. So you're not allowed to kill except if it is pure mistake. وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَأَ فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ مُؤْمِنَةٍ وَدِيَةٌ مُسَلَّمَةٌ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ إِلَّا أَيْ صَدَّقُ and whosoever kills a believer by mistake, it is ordained that he must be set that he must set free a believing slave, and a compensation, blood money, be given to the deceased family, unless they remit it. So the expiation here, that you, the person who had killed by mistake, is to set a slave free and also to give blood money, set a slave free for the sake of Allah Azza wa and for the person who had done the crime against, sorry, the killing against, he has to give idea, blood money for the family of the deceased, except if they what? That is, except if they pardon. Is that the say? Unless they remit it. Remit it means they wave it out. So if you are a believer, 
if the deceased belonged to a people at war with you and he was a believer, the freeing of a believing slave is prescribed. Right. And if he belonged to a people with whom you have a treaty of mutual alliance, compensation, meaning blood money, must be paid to his family, and a believing slave must be freed. And whosoever finds this, the penance of freeing a slave beyond his means, he must fast for two consecutive months in order to seek repentance from Allah. And Allah is ever all-knowing or wise. Amr ibn Shu'ayb narrated from his father on the authority of his grandfather that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam judged in a case of an unintentional killing that the blood money was to be 100 camels. So this is called the blood money, the light blood money, because it is one the heavy. This is the light. So there's a light, there's a heavy. The light one is for the one who had killed in pure mistake. This is the light one. The heavy one is going to be same number of camels, but different price, different age, big, bigger. And that is for the person who semi uh, deliberate is not full deliberate. What is a semi deliberate? Anybody tell me? Tell, um, Ismail, tell us what is a semi deliberate. Uh, semi deliberate is when you have a uh, weapon that will kill. But you don't so you deliberately basically hit the person with it, but the weapon normally does not cause the death. So you have deliberately hit him with a stone or a stick or, or, or a slipper and suddenly he died. You didn't mean to kill him, but you deliberately what? Hit him. It's not like a mistake. Mistake is like, as I said, I was, let's say, uh, driving my car on the street and it happened that you crossed the road and I killed you. That's called pure mistake. But a person, who is, for example, driving his car and he's seen a person who wants to go and run him over, that's deliberate killing. A person who had seen a person and wanted to beat him up, so he used his slipper and he killed him, that's called semi-deliberate. Why semi-deliberate? Because normally this, the slipper does not cause what? Death. He wants to beat him up. But it happens that this guy is so fragile, he died from the slipper. So if it is, semi-deliberate, then it's going to be heavy blood money. Heavy blood money, it's going to be the same number of camels, but it costs more, as we're going to see. And then the last one, which is the deliberate. Deliberate is not just the, the, uh, the blood money. There will be extra, which is what they have agreed upon. What they have, what? Agreed upon. The blood money, by the way, has been set. It's 100 camels. And now how much is 100 camels? We will see, inshallah, in a minute. Fine. Uh, so he said, yes, again. Okay. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, judged in a case of an unintentional killing that the blood money was to be 100 camels, 30 of which were six months to two years old. No. So this is first 30 camels, so it's 100 camels. They are comprising, or they are, con they, they are uh, in the following, contain them 30 from the camels of Bint Makhad. Bint Makhad is from one to two years. It's not six months. It has to be one year to two years. So this is the 30 camels. Second set of 30 camels. 30 camels, which were two years old. And the 30 camels from two to three. So they have to be finishing two, and they are into the third. This is called Bint Labun. The third three, 30, which is Hitqa. And that is from they have finished three and they are into their fourth. They've got 30 plus 30 plus 30, how much? 90. And the last 10, Wa'ashra, or Wa'ashra, Bani Labun, Dhakar, is going to be male, 10 camels, male. The age is from two to three. Age, they completed two and they are in the third year. So you've got 30 from one to two, 30 from two to three, 30 from three to four. 10 from 2 to 3, and it's male. The rest is female. This is called the light blood money. Adiyah al mukhaffafa It's not the heavy one. Fine, go ahead. He also said, 
the value of the deer during the time of the Masjid of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 800 dinars or 8,000 dirhams. The deer of the people of the book at the time was half of that of the Muslims. This, con this continued until Umar became the Khalifa. He stood and addressed the people saying, camels have become expensive. So then Umar set the weight for, the people, uh, set the weight for those whose wealth was in gold at 1,000 dinars. For the people of silver, it was 12,000 dirhams. For the people whose wealth was in cows, it was 200 cows. For the people who owned sheep, it was 2,000 sheep. For those who owned garments, it was 200 garments. However, he left the idea of the people of the book the same and did not raise it. Right. So here, Umar al-Khattab, when he was in the reign of the Skilafa, what he said that the, the, the Prophet وسلم, he, when he set the deer is 100 camels, the equivalence of that was 800 dinars or 8,000 dirham. And the blood money of the people of the book is on half of that. Now, this is the cost of the 100 camels at the time of the Prophet of Allah, which is comprising 30 camels from 1 to 2, 30 camels from 2 to 3, 30 camels from 3 to 4, that's the female, and then 10 from the male from 2 to 3. It's costing 800 dinars from the, which is what? From the gold, from the gold. Each dinar, how much is in grams? We know it exactly. 4.25, 4.25 grams of gold, 24 carats of gold. Right, so it's 800 dinars. Umar Khattab, he said, no, camels are gone expensive. So instead of 800, he make it 1,000. And for the silver, instead of 8,000, he made it 12,000 dirham. And from the cows, still 200 cows from the sheep, 2,000 sheep. Right. Now you could have a rough idea what is the light blood money, how much it costs in money. Let's work it out in English pounds. The pounds are dropping down, by the way, very a lot. Okay, we know that the gram, one gram of 24 carats of gold at the moment is 47 pounds. How a lot. I remember it was 14. I was here. And one day in the 1990s, it was 14 pounds, one gram. It's now what? 47 at the moment. You could just put the app, commodities there, and they will show you. Today I was looking at it. It's 47. So if you multiply now, I want to know according to the camel, okay, if it's according to Al Khattab, he made it 1,000 dinars. So how much grams of gold? Or 1,250. Just multiply 1,000, multiply by 4.25. So that's 4 kilos and 250 grams. How much is 4,250 grams of gold cost in English money? Multiply by what? By 47. You'll get the number 200,000 pounds. That's the blood money. It's not the peanuts they give you from the, from the insurance. <laughs> it's actually much more. They don't give you 200,000, do they? Do they give you 200,000? Depends what you lose. What about you lose your whole life? They give you 200,000? If it's this, okay then. Because in our country, they give you only 25. You could jump on, up and down if you wish, but they can't get more than 25. Okay, it's 200,000. See, um, Islam made it, you know, very severe penalty if you kill somebody. As long as it is the mistake of that person who you killed, so it's not it's, it's, it's your mistake, then it is a mistake. But if it's a mistake of that person, it's not there's no blood money on you. I'll give you an example. So if you are driving in your car and you're driving the speed limit, and this person not supposed to cross, and there's no zebra crossing there, or there's nothing to cross, and you cross, you didn't see him, you knocked him, there's no uh, uh, penalty in terms of fasting, and there's no penalty as well in terms of giving what the blood money. And the insurers will pay, but I'm just saying, Islamically, it's the difference between a person that he's driving recklessly so fast, and this guy he crossed the road on the proper crossing, and then you knocked him down. That's called killing by mistake. Okay, it could reach the you know, semi-deliberate, but it's by mistake. I'll give you another example. You're driving as well, or you, you woke up in the morning and you went to your car, ground the car, there's nothing there. You put the ignition on 
and you drove. He didn't know that there was a, a child or a mother with a child. She passed him by, her uh, pram hooked into the back of your car. And you, are, you drove, you, you drove the child and you killed him, you knocked him or whatever. He didn't know, you're driving, there was nothing there behind my car. It's the woman's fault, it's the mother's fault. Whatever the child of his, for example, he was running around and he hooked himself into the car, he didn't know. There is no penalty upon you, okay? So if it's a mistake of the person, it's not your penalty, it's not your mistake. But if it's your mistake, then we call it uh, not deliberate or indeliberate mistake. So now we know that Islam makes it very hard upon the person to, when he has to get the blood money. I remember people who had killed deliberately. Their blood money is shooting up the roof. For example, there used to be some Yemeni people coming from Yemen. Yemen got lots of revenge there. And they come to our country in Jordan and he's collecting his blood money and his blood money is half a million. So all his family and all his tribe are trying to get the money. All his, you know, trying to get the money. So so much because he said, and the Islam makes it just to make it to penalize this person to make sure that he does not repeat this again. And this is to protect the society. Let's go now into the killing where the blood money is legal or to be taken. Killing that obligates blood money. The scholars agree that the blood money is obligatory in cases of mistaken killing and semi-deliberate killings. So it is what in the, again? In cases of mistaken killings. Mistaken killings, not deliberate. And semi-deliberate. And semi-deliberate. It is also obligatory in the case of intentional murder, wherein the perpetrator does not fulfill the requirements for having the punishment meted out to them. Okay. So also it is the blood money compulsory into the as well, deliberate killing. Uh, this deliberate killer, he had what? Lost one condition uh, from the condition. Like, for example, he is young. Go ahead. Such as, uh, such as death caused by a minor or an My, Minor means which is not, which is puberty. Okay, child. Man, or? Or an insane person. Or an insane person. Or, you know, as well. Oh, that's all. There's something else called continue. The blood money is also obligatory yeah. when the victim is not of the same level of inviolability as the murderer, such as when a slave is killed by a free person. Did we agree on this? We said no. Blood is equal, whether he's a slave or he is free. But there is another example where the blood is not equal. Can you may tell me? Son and the father. Son and the father. Well done. So the father killed his son, we don't kill the father. So there's no retaliation. And another one, Muslim, killing one, not Muslims, there's no death as well, penalty. He will be given any extreme sort of punishment, but not the death. So, uh, 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 right, continue. The blood money is also obligatory if a sleeping person's movements cause the death of another person or who falls upon another while sleeping and it kills the person. Right. So you fell on somebody or you have slept, and you rolled on that baby of yours and you killed him. There is a blood money as well to be paid because it's called, and that is mistaken, you know, not deliberate. Now, a person who got drunk, person who got drunk. So he's almost like insane. He killed someone. So he drank, he toxic and drink, and then he drink, and he's got drunk. And you know this is intoxicant drink. He killed someone. Would retaliation take place, blood money or not? He killed someone deliberate. Yell. Yes. Of course, of course, he will get the death penalty. The, the people who he killed deliberately, the people are entitled to have retaliation as well for blood money. But if a person had drank from a cup, believing it's water, but it actually was 
whatever alcoholic drink, you know, white. What do you call this? If it's white, come on. <laughs> huh? Like something which is white. Vodka. He knows vodka. <laughs> it's not vodka, is it? This is. <laughs> so this is, he thought it was water, it was vodka. And vodka gets you drunk. So he got drunk and he killed someone. Is he now going to be considered as a deliberate killer or not? No. See the difference? So the person who drank and he knows he's drinking alcohol got drunk. Because this person, he wants to kill that person. But he's getting drunk not to really not to make the impact on him hard to forget it, you know, to make him, you know, and they, they, they say as well the drinking is courageous. It's not very courageous, you don't know what's the you know consequences, that's why. Quite Probably. the types of blood money. The blood money can either be heavier or lighter. The lighter is required in the case of a mistaken killing. The heavier is okay, so the light in the lighter one is what. In the non deliberate, mistaken killing. That's the lighter one, which we have said 100 camels, 30 between 1 and 2, 30 between 2 and 3, 30 between 3 and 4, and 10 between 2 and 3 from the males. Total. The heavier is required in the case of a semi deliberate killing. In the case of murder, if the relative of the deceased pardons the murderer and they agree upon some compensation, Whatever they agree upon will be acceptable, as pre, as previously quoted from Amr ibn Shuraib on the authority of his uh, of his father from his grandfather, that the Prophet وسلم, said, "Whoever kills a believer intentionally shall be handed over to the relatives of the victim. If they wish, they may have him killed, or if they wish, they may take the blood money from him, which is thirty four-year-old camels, thirty jadda, um, jada, jada." jada. Between four and five. And 40 pregnant camels. Pregnant camels, that means almost eight years plus. So they are camels, okay, and they've got already babies inside them. Okay, 40, they've got babies inside them. This is, okay, this is for the deliberate and also on top of it. Whatever reconciliation they come to will be for them due to the harshness of the blood money requirements. So not just this, this 100 plus something where they agree. Maybe they agree even double this, triple this. I want 300 camels. I want 400 camels. Whatever they agree upon. Okay. But once they set this in the tribe, it will run as a uh, as a, a scale by which they compare. So, for example, they set it to 300 because it's a deliberate. The other tribe made another deliberate with another tribe. They will say, well, we want 400 because other tribe, they asked for 400. It becomes like a, you know, something like a scale by which they compare. So we got now... The light blood money and the heavy blood money. It's called heavy. You call it heavy? Yeah. Heavy. Right. So the, the, the heavy one is for the semi deliberate. And for the deliberate one, then the heavy plus whatever they have agreed upon. <clears throat> the heavier heavy. blood money is equivalent to 100 camels, which 40 of them being pregnant. The Prophet said, the accidental semi-deliberate killing by a whip or staff has a blood money of 100 camels, 40 of which already have offspring in her belly. Okay, right. So that's the for the semi-deliberate and for the deliberate. Deliberate, of course, we have plus whatever they agreed upon. Now, this blood money can come from the money of the one who committed the act. Well, what about the deliberate? Does it say it has the deliberate after the hadith? Does it say anything? So after you said pregnant. What does it say after the pregnant? Um, hadith, the last hadith, you say 40, no, 40, and their belly. 40 of which already have offspring in her belly. Continue. This blood money can come from the money. Okay, then, the money. then there is something missing here. As for the deliberate, it will be in the money of the person who is the killer. So the blood money will be taken from the killer himself. Go ahead, man, after that. <clears throat> Uh, well, after, yeah, after just read straight away. Uh, this blood money can come from the money of the one who committed the act. No, no, that means that sentence is missing. The blood money of the deliberate killing. 
comes from the money of the one who did the act. Okay. Oh. You see? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the one who's missing is the, the blood money of the deliberate killer. Yeah. Now, comes from the money of the person himself. Continue. The blood money due to a mistake or semi semi intentional. So it, well, he wants to talk now where the money is being taken now. The deliberate the, the blood money. So the blood money, the deliberate is being taken from the money of the killer himself. The blood money of the semi killing semi deliberate or mistaken is upon whom? Continue now. The blood money due to a mistaken or semi intentional killing is upon the clan of the perpetrator. Clan of the perpetrator is called Arabic Aqila. Aqila. Who are they? This refers to his male relatives from his father's side. It includes the adult, wealthy, sane males. Also included among them are the blind, the aged. Okay, and the... but what well, we have to understand who they are. Actually, they are. If you if you have studied the uh, inheritance, they're called agnated by himself. All of those who are uh, agnated by himself, they are to be pledging uh, on helping in paying this blood money. Of course, we said for the what for the. Mistaken and the semi deliberate, not the deliberate. The deliberate is only the person himself he pays it. So it comes into that his father and grandfathers upwards. So we call him the origin. Also, it comes in that the son of the killer and downwards. And it comes in that as well his brothers and the son of his brothers and downwards. And here, the son of the brothers, which are the brothers full or half from the father's side, not the brother from the mother's side. So maternal brothers, they are not included. It's only what? Paternal brothers or full brothers. Do you understand that, Rahman? What is paternal brother? Okay. Paternal brother means the brother of yours, either from father and mother or from your father. But the brother from the mother only, no, he's not to be included. and He will not be participating in this blood money. And it is only on those who are having they are sane the insane no we don't take money from them so if you have a brother who's insane even if he's rich we don't take money and also it is the one who is rich so if he's poor he will not be paid so he said that this will include even the one who is blind gone blind included among them are the blind the aged and the senile if they possess well if they possess well so they are rich you've got a rich uncle rich nephew Okay, and even if it's blind, even an old, senile, no problem. And also, it will include? However, females, poor, underage, and insane members are not included. So those who are not included, females, even if you're rich, because it has to be males. And poor, or that is male poor, is not included. Uh, young, beyond the age of puberty, is not included, even if he's rich. Insane is not included. Also? Also, the relative of a different religion than the perpetrator is not is also not included. Okay, so the one who is, if you are a relative uncle who is a Christian or Jewish or non-Muslim, is not included. He will not be participating in that blood money. Now, this is because this principle is based on who it uh, is based on who it is that must come to the aid and support of the person. By the way, it's not voluntary. This is, this is by by the laws of Islam. So the judge would impose upon all the relatives of that killer to participate in this blood money as long as this killing is what we said but is it mistaken or semi-deliberate but if it's deliberate no it's only the person who had made the crime i mean if his father wants to help his uncle wants to help yeah but it's, it's voluntary but this one is you have to be so obligatory they have to participate and the judge will make them to pay now this is because this principle is based on who it is that must that must come to the aid and support of the person. And all of these categories are excluded from the requirements of giving the individual aid and support. So the ones who are always helping is all these people who are the male and they are the male heirs. We, are, we call them agnation by himself. Now, the basis for acquiring the plan to pay the blood money is in a hadith is in a hadith uh, is in a hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu he said two women from the tribe of Hudayl fought and one of them threw a stone at the other and killed her and what was in her womb the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam judged that the blood money for the fetus was a male or female slave and he judged that the blood money upon the woman was to be upon the clan 
Right. So here, this woman, she killed another woman by hitting her with a stone. So she killed her and she killed what is in the womb. So there's two blood money here. The blood money of the what? The baby in the womb. The blood money of the woman herself. Those two blood monies is to be paid from the one who said, which is the male relatives, yes? It's just said from her clan. From clan, from male relatives. From the male relatives, which is the agnetic by himself. Now we understand how much is the blood money of a child uh, in the fetus, in the womb, is what? A slave. A slave. So that means a slave. You have to give a slave as a blood money. Also, there's another hadith which talks about five camels. So let's say that you have a womb, two women, or a man kicked another woman in her womb. She didn't kill her. He killed the, the, the baby. Okay, the baby he was inside the womb. Then he came out later on as a miscarriage. So the judge would rule that he was alive due to the kick. He died. So he will rule for that baby to have five camels already. So this baby already uh, being rich inside the womb. <laughs> so he got five camels. And when he was killed, these five camels will be bequeathed to the heirs. Do you understand that? So from those five camels, who's going to inherit? The mother, if she's alive. The brother and the sister of the fetus. If he's got brothers and sisters, that mother's got another babies. The father of the fetus, okay, that baby was in the womb. They were inherited from those five camels, which is uh, the, the fetus in the womb of the mother. Now, the blood money for parts of the body. Humans have body parts that are singular, such as a nose, a tongue, and a private part, and others that come in pairs, such as eyes, ears, and hands. Yet other parts are even more in number. If a person destroys another person's singular body parts, or both body parts that come in pairs, the injured party is entitled to the complete blood money. If a person destroys one of a body part that comes in pairs, then the injured party is entitled to is entitled to half of the complete blood money. Do you understand that? So if you've got two hands, if one cut off one hand, is entitled for what? Half. If you cut both hands, two. Do you, do you understand that? Hello, are you, are you with me, guys? <laughs> so a person who had cut Abdurrahman your nose, how much? Would be entitled half of the blood money, the full. Huh? It... Have you got two noses? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you got two noses in the sun. <laughs> so it's full. Yeah. Nose is full. One eye. One person who is already one eyed. <laughs> To understand me, he's already one eye, and this person pulled the wrong, you can see how much. Full. Full. See, Islam comes in justification. Full. So I'm going to ask a question. If a person cuts somebody else's hand so that the person can retaliate, if the hand has been cut from the elbow, you will cut it from the elbow, true? Yes. Okay, this person who is fully two eyes had poked. Deliberately, the eye of somebody who's already half, you know, one eye. He poked the healthy eye of his. He became totally blind. The other person wants to retaliate. Do you understand that? You, two full eyes, you are the criminal. You have poked a person in his eye, which he can see with. The other eye is blind. So it's one eyed already. That person wants to retaliate. Can he have two eyes or can have one eye? Because you made him, you made him completely blind. <laughs> so he's entitled to get two eyes for me. Do you think this is justice? Yeah. That's I think if I get, if he gets one, is it justice? See, Islam, Allah, if you look at it, subhanAllah, it's everything detailed. Now when I tell you the answer, you'll understand the beauty of Islam. Well done. He's entitled to poke one eye and have money as well, blood money for him, which is half of the deer. Either he will have full deer, we want to retaliate, he will retaliate, can't poke two eyes, because one eye is being poked. He could poke one eye, but because you made me blind, I'm going to have half of the deer for my second eye. See? 
That's justice. Islam, subhanAllah. So it gives you that retaliation. So you want to, to, to taste the, uh, the, the, the triumph of retaliation because he poked me. But maybe he's rich, this guy. He doesn't care. Like, okay, I'm going to poke your eye. Then this rich man will think twice, more than twice, before he pokes somebody else's eye because he thinks that everything is his money. No, they might poke your eye as well as retaliation. That's where Islam came with deterrence. It's not just blood money. It's a retaliation. <clears throat> as long as the retaliation is to be not to be exceeding what is being damaged, retaliation is guaranteed. Do you understand that? But if it is not really known, for example, he had uh, uh, threw acid onto your face and you got into your eye, but you could hardly see, but you're not blind. You can't just throw acid on him because you don't know how much of the damage is going to get. Because you, you, you could completely blind him, but you didn't know, you're not blind completely. That's in that case, blood money. Do you understand that? So Islam came to make sure that there is justice here. But trouble. Thus, the complete blood money will be paid for the nose or both eyes. So, nose, both eyes. Now, however, if one eye is destroyed, the person is entitled to half of the complete blood money. For both eyelids of one eye, the person is entitled to half, but for one eyelid on one eye, the person, the person is entitled to one quarter of the complete blood money. Allah. For all of the fingers or all of the toes, the person is entitled to the complete blood money. However, for each finger or each toe, the person is entitled to 10 camels. Do you understand why 10 camels? 10 by 10 is what? 100. It's a complete bull money. It's 100. So each one is worth 10. Each one is worth 10. Now, can I retaliate if the cut, if the cut was from a joint? Yes. But if he cut you from there, not from a joint, you can't retaliate exactly. He would say to me, well, in the crime, the criminal, he's a rich man. He will not be, uh, he will be willing to pay the money. He's safe. But, but this guy, when he hit you or cut your finger, I don't think he's got, brought a ruler uh, and exactly cut you from where that you can't retaliate back. It's, not, it's impossible. But this is Qadar Allah that he, he cut you from somewhere that you can't retaliate. But if he cut you more than the joint, let's say the, between the two joints, then he's entitled to cut a joint and have what? Blood money? For the remaining. SubhanAllah. Blood money for the remaining. I could have 10 camels for the remaining. Okay, of my finger. And I'm going to cut you from the joint because you cut me more than the joint. You cut me here. If I cut you in the joint, he will cut the joint. Or take a blood money, which is 10 camels. That's up to you. What do you want? 10 camels or? <laughs> now. Half of the and, and ten camels. Yeah. Or you can take twenty camels. No, no, no. Either you take for well, the whole thing ten camels, uh -huh. or you take this and ten camels. Whatever you want, but this is a finger. See a finger. You cut you find one whole finger is worth ten camels. You understand the whole thing? It's called now nah, problem. If all of the teeth are knocked out, the person is entitled to the complete blood money. For each individual tooth, a person receives five camels. Mashallah. Five camels for each tooth. He knocks you with it. <laughs> the knuckle buster. Is it, what do you call it, yeah? Duster, knuckle duster. Yeah. Look how dangerous this is. A'udhu billah. So you got one tooth, five camels. But you could retaliate. They will bring a bridge to protect all of your teeth, and you could knock one tooth. Silver <laughs> teeth. Gold? <laughs> you would be paying for the gold as well. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Abu Bakr ibn Ubaidullah ibn Umar narrated from Umar that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, For the nose, if it is completely removed, the blood money is 100 camels. Complete. For one hand, it is 50 camels. For one leg, it is 50 camels. For one eye, it is 50. Look, for... look, this is from the Prophet of Sallam al Setting these numbers. Go ahead. For a wound that falls just short of reaching the brain, it is one third of the complete blood money. For a deep wound, it is one third of the complete blood money. For an injury that causes a bone to be dislocated, it is 15 camels. For a wound that reaches the bone, it is five camels. For a tooth, it is five camels. 
for every finger or toe there is, uh, it is 10, ten camels. Everything has been said, even the wound, the injury, the stabbing, everything has been said. Fine. Read. Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr ibn Muhammad ibn Amr ibn Hazm narrated from his father on the authority of his grandfather that the, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent, sent to the people of Yemen a document containing the laws of zakah, sunan, and blood money. It contained the following instructions. The blood money for a life is 100 camels. For the nose, if it is removed completely, it is the complete, it is the complete amount of the blood money. For the tongue, it is the complete blood money. For the both for both lips, it is the complete blood money. For both testicles, it is the complete blood money. For the male private part, it is the it is the complete blood money. For the spinal column, it is the complete blood money. For both eyes, it is the complete blood money. For one leg, it is half of the complete blood money. For a wound that falls just short of reaching the brain, of, the brain. Of reaching the brain. It is one third of the complete blood money. For a deep wound, it is one third of the complete blood money. For an injury that causes a bone to be dislocated, it is 15 camels. For every finger of the hand or toe of the, uh, or toe of the feet, it is 10 camels. For a tooth, it is five camels. For a wound that reaches the bone, it is five camels. Subhanallah. Documents setting all these numbers. I will stop inshallah here and following title will be the blood money for, lo uh, for the losing of, of use of one's limbs. What time is your Isha? Quarter past nine. I need to leave in the next five minutes, inshallah. So if you have any questions regarding what you have heard, Fadali Muhammad Zaman. Not Muhammad Zaman, Muhammad Johnson. Where's Muhammad Zaman? Alhamdulillah, Fadal. Sure, if it's um, non-intentional killing, but it's the person who's killed fault. They don't get any money. What if it's both of them say, say I'm crossing on the dual category. I shouldn't be on the dual category. But the other person also speeding. Right. So the, the, the actually here, this the, the mistake from both sides. Let's say the example that is setting, I'm reading it because of the YouTube and the listeners here. Person who is crossing a dual carriageway. You're not supposed to cross a dual carriageway. You're supposed to go either a walking bridge or something like this or a tunnel beneath. And this person is driving as well, crazy speed. Okay, one killed the other. What is is what what is them here? First of all, the uh, these issues will be resolved by a judge. Normally, it is the case that the person who is uh, driving fast will be penalised. Penalization of uh, which is an offense against the state itself. So he will pay the penal penalization of that. And also he will pay for any cause of damage. And the damage here is being done by this child. So the, uh, the damage is done by this car, by this reckless driving. Definitely, even that person had crossed uh, the bridge, the, the carriage way, the judge will understand that. Uh, crossing the dual carriageway is not as mistake as this person driving fast because the one who's having the tool of death is the car. That person who crossed, he hasn't got the tool of death. He's not going to kill the car who's crossing. It's the car who's killing. Just to be more careful, he will pay the blood money, but maybe it will not be considered as a deliberate because. Uh, uh, and sometimes in such cases, the judge will increase the blood money because this is a semi-deliberate plus there's a reckless driving, for example. Then he will increase the blood money and he will ask for him to go and settle more. But in this case, maybe he will not because of the mistake upon this child or this adult who had crossed wrongly. <clears throat> in Islamic judgment law, you don't have to worry about anything. There will be justice, and as I said, how to define how much to be paid, for example, uh, regarding if you remember half of the arm and half of this, there will be even scholars to set this. When Umar al-Khattab had increased the price of the blood money from 800 dinars to 1,000 dinars, he had looked into the economic and he looked into the justification. So he said at the time of the Prophet, camels were worth less than the camels at this time. And this tells us as well for us, 
when you lend somebody some money and you lend them in a time where the pound is so strong, and then when it was for the paying back, the pound is weak. You don't give him the same money. You give him more. Do you understand what I'm saying? He lent you 1,000 pounds and the pound was worth $2. Now the pound is worth almost a dollar. So, so in this case, the person who is in debt, he should consider how much was the money worth at that time. And not just to say, oh, well, you gave me 1,000 pounds. And I'll give you I mean, a more practical example, because maybe you, it's dollars and two dollars, but I'm telling you now something even more than that. Like, for example, the Syrian lira, Syrian lira before the war, okay, one pound, a long time ago, talking about was strong, is worth 100 lira, one pound. So let's say this person, he had borrowed money uh, and he had borrowed, let's say, 1,000 lira. So that's 10 pounds. 10 pounds is worth. Now, after the war, each one pound is 20,000 lira. Do you understand that? So am I going to go and borrow from him and give him 1,000 lira now? No, it's not, it's not correct. 1,000 lira is now, is not, it's nothing, it's 20 pence. <laughs> so that, so it's the same thing with any money. So you have to, that's what, what Umar Khattab had done here. So at the time of the Prophet, camels won. Not at that, that price. So you need the price. So the, at this time as well, maybe we will adjust the, uh, adjust the money price of the camels according to what the camel price of these days as well. So the judge here, as I said, will set a figure which is linked to the deen. This is the beauty of Islam, Akhwan. This is the beauty of Islam, that Islam is a practical thing. It goes with all ages and all is suitable, and it is fixing for all times. Whereas if you look at other man-made laws, it has to be changed all the time. Islam is fit and it's flexible. You could bend it with a hammer. Now, is that a lot of the question, anybody? I have a question for number one. Tadal ya Ahmed. Go ahead, please, Ubaid. You put your hands up. I thought it was you need a question. Yes, I do, but I think Ubaid's from Ellsbury. No, no, just ask your question, please. The one who is executed for killing somebody while drunk. I, I can't hear you properly. There's a sound behind you, got a noise behind you. Thumbs up. The one who is um, executed for killing somebody while drunk. Before he is executed, would he receive 80 lashes? The person who is drunk, uh, before he is going to be having uh, his penalty because he killed somebody, is he going to be lashed? Allahu Adam, what, what is the lashes going to do to him? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> could lash him as much as he wants. I don't think he's going to feel it because he's already been ruled to be dead. But as a question, I mean, to have to answer it as well. Um, the lashes is, is the rights of Allah. And the, the, the retaliation is the right of the person. So the family of the killed one, they could wave out yeah, the retaliation. Okay. So the question is still holding. So the rights of Allah, it will hold. That means he will be lashed, 100 lashes. He will be lashed. And, and in, in, in cases of this, the Ikhwani, the death penalty does not take straight away. They will wait until the heir of the killed one to come to a conclusive decision. And they have to be all of them uh, adults. If one of them is not an adult, let's say he killed a person who's got children. Some of the children still below the age of puberty. So even if the other children had said, which are adult children, they said, we want to kill him. Retaliation. The retaliation will not take place until all of them. So they have to wait what? Until that person grows, becomes an adult, and then gets a decision. And in that time, as I said, Ahmed, yes, he will be lashed. He will be lashed. Allah's, Allah's uh, right will be fulfilled. Uh, I know a story of a man who had killed somebody and then he became a Sheikh Adaya. 
Uh, he's been there in the prison more than 18 years, waiting for 18 years, waiting, waiting for the child to what? To grow up. He was a child, baby. So when he was 15 or 16, I can't remember, that is his decision. And he was waiting because all other heirs, they said, what? We want to be killed. But that child has to be waiting. When he grew up, he asked for his death. How old? Asked for his death. May Allah have mercy upon you. Yalla, Ubaid. Ubaid, you're not here, but amongst us. He's working, he's at work. Yeah. Sorry, I'm working. I was working. Uh, um, I'm driving, so sorry. If, uh, uh, basically, you're not looking at the screen while you're driving, are you? Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, uh, I've got the phone on the thingy. Um, if, the, if somebody, like a uh, non-Muslim country, like if you're living here, and you murder somebody deliberately, is the punishment they give you, is that enough or you have to... Uh, uh, if, so if you kill as a Muslim, Muslim, if you kill somebody who's a non-Muslim, you have to, you but, know, free a slave. No, no, sorry. But I mean, even if you kill a Muslim person in the land where there's no Sharia law. Yeah. What's the punishment? Like, if you do, is that enough what they give the you? Punishment, you? well, you're going to be getting punishment from the law by being imprisoned. There's no death penalty anyway. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and also you're going to be, the blood money, you're going to be paying, so I think, I don't know, I mean, do they ask for money in this country? Uh, just life sentence on, life sentence 25 years, you could get out for 15 years if you're a good, good behavior man. 15 years, you could kill somebody else again as well. It's, it's not really a big deterrence, is it? Um, Islamically, you have to fast the two months. Okay, Islamically, you have to fast in two months. Or if you have a slave, you have set him free. Um, as for the blood money, you have to go to his family and settle to a blood money with him, with them. So that this is the law where, where they're going to take your, for example, in prison and everything. Yes, okay. But you want to settle your account with Allah Azza wa Jal. So you go to the family and pay them because you, you took one, one person from their life. He could be the breadwinner, you know, that person. So they need somebody to help them financially. Now, Zakallahir. Fine. We uh, stop here, inshallah. So, so next week, shall it? It's 10 past 7 plus. SubhanAllah, Bihamdik. I should have just stopped the Please do not make the down until I go.